Hi, and welcome back to AWS Jolie. Today we're continuing our new series covering network fundamentals in AWS, and we're diving into designing our Amazon VPC and specifically talking about subnetting. Please remember to share this video with anyone who may be interested, give it a thumbs up if you like it, sub if you love it, and let's dive in. So in our last video, we covered a high level overview of networking and also the Amazon default VPC. And we left off introducing subnets, so let's pick up from there. So, so far we have learned that subnetting is the process of dividing up our network into smaller network sections. And this helps us isolate groups of hosts together, which can enhance our routing efficiency, add network management control, and improve our network security. Subnetting creates multiple logical networks that exist within a single class A, B, or C network. And these smaller subnetworks create a network of interconnecting subnetworks. So let's dive into the history of subnetting. Subnetting ensures that every device that connects to the internet is assigned a unique IP address. This helps the data sent over the internet to reach the right device out of billions of devices connected to the internet, and every IP address has two parts, the network and the host. The first part of the address is used to identify the network part within the network, and the second part of the address is used to specify a specific host within that network. However, the length of the network part changes depending on the network's class. Networks are categorized into different classes, A through E, and we covered these in the last lesson. Class A networks can connect millions of devices. Class B and Class C networks are progressively smaller in size. And again, Class D and E networks are not really used. Remember from our OSI models that IP addresses are designed for internet routers to route data to the correct network. However, in a class A network, there could be millions of connected devices, which increases the time needed for that data to find that right device. Subnetting narrows down the IP address to a smaller range of devices. But because an IP address is limited to indicating the network and the device address, IP addresses cannot be used to indicate which subnet an IP packet should go to. Routers within a network use something called a subnet mask to sort data into subnetworks. A subnet mask is used for internal usage within a network. Routers use subnet masks to route data packets to the right place. Subnet masks are not indicated within data packets that are traveling over the network. Subnet masks are important for IP version 4 addresses because the IP address doesn't give any information on the network size. Class sizes are not the network size. You can determine the number of types of an IP address any given local network requires based on its default subnet mask. Let's check out a real world example here. Suppose we have an IP packet that is addressed to 192.0.2.15. This IP address is a class C network. So the network is identified as 192.0 and network routers forward that package to a host on the network indicated by the network part of this IP address. Once the packet arrives at that network, a router within the network consults its routing table. It does some binary mathematics using its subnet mask of 255.255.255.0, sees that the device address is a slash 15, and calculates which subnet the packet should go to. It then forwards the packet to the router or switch responsible for delivering packets within that subnet, and the packet arrives at the IP address of 192.0.2.15. Subnets are what services run from inside our Amazon VPC, and they are how we add structure and functionality to our VPCs. And remember that subnets are an availability resilient feature of AWS. And remember from our last lesson, a subnet is a subnetwork of our VPC's CIDR range, and it is created in one availability zone because it runs in that one availability zone. And if that availability zone fails, then our subnet and the services running inside the subnet will also fail, but we can design our infrastructure for high availability, and we can put our infrastructure in different subnets and different availability zones. And remember that one subnet is in one AZ, so it can never be more than the one AZ, 
but one availability zone can have zero or more subnets. Remember, for your certification exams, one subnet equals one availability zone. And by default, as we saw in the last lesson, the subnets use an IP version 4 address, and it's allocated as a subset of the IP version 4 VPC CIDR range. And subnet CIDR should not overlap, and we can also add an IP version 6 CIDR. And as we make our way through this series, hopefully subnetting is going to become more familiar. But remember that subnets in our VPC can communicate between each other using the local route. And we're going to talk about this in a later lesson. But one more thing that we did not mention in our intro to networking is that some IP addresses inside each Amazon VPC are reserved, and we're not able to use those addresses. And there are five IP addresses in each subnet that we cannot use. The first address that we cannot use is the first address of each network. The second address is the network plus one address. And this is the first IP address after our network address. So this IP address in this example would be 10.0.0.1, and AWS uses this address for the VPC router. The third IP address that we cannot use is called the network plus two address. So this is the second IP address after our network address, and AWS uses this address for DNS. The fourth address that we cannot use is the network plus three address, and it is reserved in case it is needed. And then the last address we cannot use is the broadcast address, which is the last IP address in our subnet. So if you create a VPC and you have 16 available IP addresses, then you would actually only be able to use 11 IP addresses. And that's really important to remember when you're designing, especially when you're designing smaller VPCs. So remember that a default VPC subnets are public and are configured for us by AWS. But with a custom VPC, the subnets inside your VPC start off private. So we have to explicitly add configuration to make these subnets public. So for each subnet, you can also uh, auto assign public IP addresses in addition to their private IP addresses for your custom VPC. But you do have to enable this option to auto assign. You can also auto assign an IP version 6 address for your Amazon VPCs too. And if you enable these options, then this flows down from the subnet level into the services that are placed inside that subnet. Subnets also have a DHCP option set, and DHCP stands for Dynamic Host Control Protocol, and this is how computer devices receive their IP addresses automatically, and each VPC comes with one DHCP option set, and it can only have one DHCP option set applied at a time. And this option set can be changed, but you need to know, especially for certification exams, you cannot edit your DHCP option set. You have to create a new one. Now in the next lesson, we're gonna keep diving deep into networking on AWS, and we're gonna dive into routing and also talk about the internet gateway. Thanks so much for stopping by, and I hope to see y'all again real soon.